Blood flow and hair loss, are they connected? Does reduced circulation in the scalp cause hair thinning? Or is this just another hair loss myth that's existed for far too long? We've got some amazing studies to look at, which give us a clearer picture about the blood flow and hair loss connection. Six years ago, I was well on my way to going bald, just like my father, grandfathers, uncles, and cousins. Now my hair is pretty thick and healthy. I'll be revealing one of the secrets that helped me keep my hair in this video. Okay, so let's jump in and take a look. There are many accelerators on hair growth, but the first one that I really want to underscore is blood flow itself, which equates to the delivery of nutrients and oxygen. This is very important and it explains a lot of the treatments for halting and reversing hair loss. Okay, so is there any evidence that blood flow is reduced in balding scalps? Scientists already in the 1980s measured the scalp blood flow in men with pattern hair loss and compared it to men with healthy hair. They found that blood flow to the crown of the scalp, the area most affected by hair loss, was on average around two and a half times lower than balding men. Other researchers found further abnormalities in the blood flow patterns of balding men. In particular, their blood flow in the temporal area, that is the side of the head that's immune to balding, was significantly higher than in the frontal areas prone to balding meaning there was less blood flowing into the areas that were balding. But healthy men without hair loss showed no such differences. Their blood circulated equally well in all parts of the scalp. Overall, the blood flow in the frontal areas of balding men was significantly compromised to that of the healthy controls. Now, the idea that impaired blood flow might contribute to hair loss is not that odd. Scalp hair follicles sit deeper within the skin compared to the rest of the body and their lower third part is surrounded by a massive network of blood vessels. It is to be expected that problems with these vessels would lead to compromised functioning of the follicles to the point of visible hair loss. And by the way, these problems are not unique just to the scalp. Impaired blood flow in any part of the body can lead to hair loss. For example, in a condition called peripheral artery disease, the arteries that supply blood to the legs or arms are pathologically narrowed. This limits the blood flowing through these extremities, leading to severe circulation problems. And hair loss is one of the earliest symptoms doctors will look for when diagnosing the condition. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at minoxidil. Minoxidil was developed and came to market as a vasodilator. In other words, a medication that dilates the blood vessels, allowing more blood to flow through. Vasodilators are useful for treating high blood pressure and minoxidil was widely used for this purpose. It does this by relaxing the smooth muscles of the vessels through the action of its metabolite, minoxidil sulfate. And though it's likely that minoxidil promotes hair growth through more than just one mechanism, it's almost certain that vasodilation is a key. For example, an early study used two sophisticated non-invasive techniques with laser and infrared light to establish whether topical application really does stimulate blood flow in balding men. There were increases in the balding areas in a dose-dependent manner, with the 5% solution producing the largest increases. Minoxidil also stimulates the secretion of a protein called vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF for short. VEGF is secreted in the follicles by the dermal papilla cells, which control hair growth. Its function is to stimulate the formation of new blood vessels. And the secretion of VEGF is stimulated by minoxidil in a dose-dependent manner. So you have a dual action of minoxidil in this regard. Firstly, through the creation of more blood vessels, and secondly, through the widening of existing vessels. The end result is better circulation in the balding areas and eventually hair regrowth. But it's not necessary to to use pharmaceuticals like minoxidil to promote hair growth. Peppermint oil extracted from the plant's leaves has traditionally been used to promote healthy circulation. One of the main components of peppermint oil is menthol, and scientists have known for nearly a century that menthol acts on the blood vessels. More sophisticated recent studies have provided direct evidence that topical application of menthol produces a, quote, robust increase in cutaneous blood flow. 
In 2014, a team of researchers out of Korea compared the effects of topical peppermint oil versus minoxidil 3% in promoting hair growth in shaved mice. Remarkably, after four weeks of daily topical application, the animals treated with peppermint oil showed far better regrowth at 92% versus 55% for minoxidil. On to the next point, and this one might be even more obvious than the last ones. Platelet rich plasma therapy. Plasma is the liquid component of blood and as the name suggests, this particular treatment uses plasma that is enriched with a higher concentration of platelets than normal. Platelets are small cell fragments in the blood that play a crucial role in clotting and wound healing. They contain growth factors and other bioactive proteins that promote tissue repair and regeneration. PRP is an autologous process, meaning PRP is made from blood drawn from the patient's veins before eventually being re-injected back in the scalp. And it works at least in part through so-called neovascularization, which is the formation of new blood vessels from pre-existing ones. This happens because PRP is rich in growth factors like vascular endothelial growth factor, VGEF, which is discussed earlier in reference to minoxidil. It's also rich in transforming growth factor B, which also promotes vascularization. The result is an increase in blood supply in the injected areas. PRP was initially developed to promote recovery from injuries and wound healing, but in the past 10 to 15 years, it has become an important treatment for hair loss. A recent review study looked at all published data and concluded that PRP is superior to placebo in the treatment of hair loss. Now this part of the video might have been considered controversial as little as one or two decades ago, but in recent years, the scientific evidence has accumulated to the point where it is now simply not possible to dismiss. For example, a study published out of Denmark in 2013 followed up nearly 11,000 young people over the span of several decades from the mid 1970s to 2011. Over 3,000 of these men would go on to develop heart disease and 1,700 of them would have a full-blown heart attack. After controlling for several potential confounding variables like smoking and socioeconomic status, there was still a clear relationship of these conditions with baldness. In other words, men who had developed heart disease and heart attacks were also more likely to go bald. This was one of the largest and longest studies of its kind, but there have been several smaller studies over the years. A recent meta-analysis looked at all the data from nine published studies and came to the following conclusions. Firstly, androgenetic alopecia is linked to a higher risk of heart disease, whereas other hair conditions like alopecia areata are not. Secondly, this relationship is stronger in younger men under the age of 55. Thirdly, the more severe their baldness, the higher their risk of developing heart disease. Baldness in the crown is particularly potentially even more dangerous than frontal hair loss. The study concluded that men with the severe balding of the crown are up to 60% more likely to develop heart disease compared to those with healthy hair. But what do these findings suggest? Well, one very compelling possibility involves insulin resistance and so-called metabolic syndrome. This refers to a constellation of symptoms that include abdominal obesity, high blood pressure, blood sugar, and triglycerides. In metabolic syndrome, the body is no longer able to properly use insulin in order to control the levels of sugar in the blood. Blood. blood sugar levels remain permanently increased as the body develops so-called insulin resistance. Metabolic syndrome is primarily a lifestyle condition. It's typically the result of an unhealthy diet rich in processed foods, accompanied by lack of exercise and a sedentary lifestyle. People with metabolic syndrome are far more likely to develop heart disease of all kinds, and the chronically elevated blood sugar levels damage the blood vessels, including those of the scalp. The primary mechanism through which this happens is atherosclerosis, the buildup of plaque in the vessels. Over time, this plaque can narrow and stiffen the vessels, restricting blood flow all over the body. This in turn increases the risk of heart attacks, strokes, and other cardiovascular complications. Another recent line of evidence regarding the role of blood flow in balding comes to us from an unexpected direction. Botulinum toxin, commonly known as Botox, is a neurotoxin produced by a bacteria. It works by blocking nerve signals to the muscles. Its most well-known application is cosmetic, namely the reduction of facial wrinkles. In 2010, a pair of doctors from Canada had a groundbreaking idea. 
What if injection of Botox to the scalp can lead to the scalp muscles relaxing in a similar manner? And what if this relaxation could reverse hair loss? To test their idea, they recruited 50 men with mild to advanced hair loss. The men spanned a wide age range from 19 to 57 years old, and the men were given two Botox sessions spaced 24 weeks apart. The injections were in 30 different spots along the muscles surrounding the scalp. Just these two sessions were enough to improve hair loss for most of the men in this study. In these photos from left to right, you can see the before and after headshots from two participants. Results like this are classed as significant regrowth in hair loss studies. They are basically best case scenario, better than what you would generally hope to get with standard minoxidil or finasteride treatment. But how could Botox accomplish this? To explain their results, the researchers compared the scalp tissues to a drum skin, which in boarding patients can be chronically tense. And this tension can, in turn, compromise blood flow to the scalp tissue. By loosening the scalp, Botox can reduce pressure on the blood vessels, improving blood flow and reversing the chronic hypoxia, which we described earlier. The researchers also highlighted that in addition to the directly beneficial effects of this improved circulation, the increased oxygenation might have another fortunate side effect. As you probably know, DHT in the scalp is synthesized from testosterone through the action of an enzyme but testosterone can also be converted to another hormone called estradiol. And unlike the estradiol has no negative effects on hair. It's possible that low oxygen environments favor the conversion of testosterone to DHT. Whereas in high oxygen environments, the testosterone is preferentially converted to estradiol. Regardless of the exact mechanism by which the improved blood flow leads to hair regrowth, one thing is certain. In the years since that groundbreaking 2010 research study, we have had a multitude of other studies that replicated and extended those results. We now know that even a single one-off Botox session is enough to result in hair growth in many patients. Other researchers also experimented with Botox doses far lower than the original study Study and also found favorable results. Adding conventional treatments like finasteride to a Botox regime can help boost regrowth even further. Now we looked earlier at the positive effects of Botox on regrowth and how improved circulation is the most likely explanation for this. But Botox is far from the only way to mechanically relieve the tension on the scalp. On the contrary, the idea of using Botox to reverse hair loss was inspired from a far simpler method scalp massage. By scalp massage, we refer to the manual stimulation of the scalp, either with the person's bare hands or with a specialized mechanical device. Aside from relaxing the scalp muscles, scalp massage is believed to directly dilate the blood vessels in the skin and promote blood flow. The use of scalp massages to, to treat hair loss is not new, but in recent decades, we have had a flurry of studies that formally examined its potential. These studies have taken scalp massages out of the realm of anecdote and placed them firmly at the forefront of science scientific hair loss research. For example, in 2019, a pair of researchers reached out on the internet and surveyed men who were using scalp massages to treat hair loss. Their aim was firstly to verify that scalp massages really did improve hair loss. Secondly, to see if it was possible to quantify this effect. They collected responses from 327 individuals diagnosed with androgenetic alopecia. Almost all of them were men. These people were all self-administering scalp massages with their bare hands. In other words, they did not have any mechanical device or professional assistance. Most respondents engaged in massage sessions lasting between 10 to 20 minutes daily, sustained over an average period of seven to eight months. 69% of study participants reported that they had stabilized or partially reversed their hair loss during this time. These beneficial effects were dose dependent. In other words, the lengthier the daily treatment sessions were, the longer the participants kept at it, the better the regrowth they experienced. On average, it took participants 36 hours of cumulative massage to notice these beneficial effects. Now, the main drawback of scalp massages is that they can be extremely tedious. The use of mechanical devices, while slightly more costly at the start, can result in far better treatment compliance and eventually better results because of that. With that said, I want to introduce you to one of the things that basically saved my own hair, the Growband Pro. The Growband Pro is a revolutionary new device that automatically massages the scalp without the need to use your hands. Simply place it on your head, adjust the dial at the back to get a good fit and turn on the grow box. You can choose the exact settings that feel right for you so you can get the perfect upward squeeze and scalp massage. 
I find that 10 minutes per day is the perfect amount to start remodeling the scalp tissues and boosting blood circulation throughout the scalp. A study even showed that blood flow improves significantly during and after use of the Grow Band. The Grow Band is super easy to use, relaxing and convenient, and helps improve blood flow throughout the scalp. I highly recommend watching Alex's 90 day hair growth challenge with the Grow Band, and I'll link to that in the description. It's clear that healthy hair growth is linked to blood flow to the hair follicle on some level. Improved microvascular circulation around the hair follicle bulb can improve hair growth and strength. The best solution for hair loss is a multi-pronged approach that fixes hair growth at the root cause whilst also kickstarting new hair regrowth and reducing DHT if possible as well. Okay guys, that's it for this video. If you're worried about your own hair loss, head straight over to hairguard.com. Due to high demand, there's currently a waiting list for the grow band, but you can sign up to be notified when it's available again. If you've got a question, leave it below and I'll respond in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.